Hey everyone, it's Ashley and I'm back with a video today to teach you how you can take inexpensive dollar store stockings, I found these ones at Dollar General, and customize them with iron on vinyl. It's really easy and fun to do. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content and let's get started. Okay guys, let's talk about what supplies you'll need for this project. I'm using the Cricut Joy. You can also use the Explorer 2 or the Maker. Any of these machines will work well for this type of project. We're going to be using some Dollar General Christmas stockings and they're only a dollar. I really love how cute these ones look and their Dollar Tree has some adorable ones as well. Some Cricut Joy Smart Iron On. This is in the color black. A pair of scissors. I'm using my Easy Press mat and I'm also going to use an iron-on protective sheet. You can use butcher paper as well. And then this is my Easy Press 2 in the 6 by 7 inch size. You can use a household iron as well. Hey guys, we're inside Cricut Design Space and I'm showing you on the desktop version. We're going to be creating some personalized stockings and these were super cute from Dollar General. I wanted to personalize it with our pets' names. Uh, we already have stockings made for my husband and myself and our children and our um, cat and dog have been using stockings that are a little bit more worn out and they don't really match the decor so I wanted to make ones that match the decor and that would look super cute. So let's go ahead and personalize them. I'm going to go and click on text. If you're following along and using a phone or a tablet, you'll check out the bottom of the screen on the left side. It'll say text. It'll be image and then text. So we'll select text. I'm going to type out both names for our pets. We have a couple of rescue pets and our dog's name is Scrappy and he showed up one day in our yard. Um, we lived out in the middle of the country when that happened, so it was really surprising to find a puppy just randomly um, in the middle of our yard in the country. And then we also have Pirate, who came to us the exact same way when we lived out in the middle of the country. She was just a wild cat um, that I think belonged to maybe one of our neighbors that had moved or something. So we found her and she was hunting in our backyard and uh, we took her in too. So I'm going to change out the fonts on these. What you do is you click on each word that you want and you can go to the top here and search through all the different fonts. If you want to make ones that are about writing, you can search for writing. You can filter them in different ways, which is awesome. Ones that you've saved online, multiple layers, um, fonts that you've uploaded, single layer. I'm just gonna be looking through the Cricut versions. Cricut has added a ton of new fonts, definitely worth checking out recently and I'm really going to have to search for a few moments because there's a lot of fonts in here that I like. I'm choosing Carly for these and I think they're really cute. It's, it's a cute way to add their name and have it look a little bit fun um, on here. So what I'm going to do now, because this one isn't a script font, I don't need to connect each letter individually. I'm just going to size this for the stocking. So I'm going to measure the stocking. It's about seven and a half inches by I'd say three and a quarter. So I'm going to make it probably six inches um, and under the height of about two and a half inches, I would say. So let's go with six inches in length for this. And that should actually work out perfectly because you can see on the side, it's still under that about two and a half mark that I need. So that one's ready to go. Now I'm going to adjust this one. When you're adjusting, if you're using a mobile device, you can click on the item and then you can just take the corner and drag it the same way that you can on the desktop. If you want to adjust it exactly, you can go up to the top here on the desktop version and just type in the measurements that you want. You can type in, say you want it six inches in width, you can type it and then it'll automatically adjust in the same ratio. Um, you can do that on the bottom of the screen on mobile if you just type in um, underneath the edit section. Okay, so those are ready. Now, all we're going to do is make sure which machine we're using it with. I'm using the Cricut Joy for this one because it's a pretty small project. I thought this would be perfect. We're going to click Make It. I'm going to do this without a mat because I'm using Cricut Smart Iron-On. So, without a mat. Because this is going to be an iron-on project, I'm going to mirror it. So, I'm going to select Mirror. If you're using a mobile device, it'll allow you to select it up on the top and it'll bring up this window here. So, make sure that you're mirroring it whenever you're using... Um, iron on vinyl or infusible ink and then select continue. We'll set our project material to smart iron on. 
and now we're going to load this into the machine. Our design is loaded into Cricut Design Space. We have our roll of iron-on vinyl, and there's two sides to this. There is a shiny side, and there is a matte side. So just keep in mind that that's what you're working with. We're going to load our material into the machine, and what you want to do is load it shiny side down. The Joy will pre-measure the amount that you need, and then what it does is it'll make sure that it's ready to cut. So we make sure that we have the blade installed in here. Um, you only change this out if you're going to use a pen anyway, so keep that one in there, and then we'll click go for it to start working. Now we're ready to unload it, so we'll click unload. It pops material out of the machine. You can really tell I've been working with glitter, guys. <laughs> I have a lot of glitter all over my work surface. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to cut away the sections that have um, already been cut here and save this other piece here for a future project. This is only cutting along that section here, so there's some leftover that I can save, and all I'll do is use it on a mat. So you can always save the leftovers for another project. I'll put this in my little scrap uh, collection to use for other things like t-shirts and bags, and then I can put this right back in the box since there's a fair amount left on that. Now we're going to work on weeding this design. You can use a weeding tool, um, but this is a pretty simple design to weed, so I'm just going to use my hands for it. All you'll do is go into the corner here, and then you're just going to pull away. There are two sides. There's the shiny side and the matte side. We have the shiny side facing that way, and then we're working from the matte side and we're just pulling back. So this part is the part that had the adhesive that keeps um, everything in place. So I'm just going to roll this back away from the design and just work slowly and that way you get the best results on your project. When you're ready to take out the little center sections, if you flip it around you can tell there's some areas where the letters will have um, to have the centers removed. What you'll do is just kind of roll this a little bit with your fingers and you can see where the little um, cuts are and you can go in and remove them that way. If you're having problems getting the centers out, you can take your weeding tool and just run it under the corners and it'll help grab the piece. It makes it a little bit faster. So now the first one is ready to go. And in case you guys were curious why our pets are named Scrappy and Pirate, Pirate is our cat, and when we found her, she had a scar across her eye. So we always said she was like a little pirate. Um, and we weren't sure if she was a, a male or a female cat at first because um, she's quite large. She's a, she's a big cat, so um, we weren't sure. We were like, okay. And... Um, after we got her, eventually we realized she was a female, and she's honestly the sweetest cat ever. She loves to be carried around like a baby. <laughs> and so there's Scrappies and there's Pirates. And Scrappy, we called him Scrappy because he, when he came to us, he was a, a puppy and he was basically um, really hungry and not taken care of very well when we found him. So. Um, he's always had to be kind of scrappy and look for his food and all of that before he came to us. So um, he just has kind of that ruffly, fun terrier look to him. So he is a scrappy dog. <laughs> okay. Now we have our stockings here. I'm going to remove the tags from them. I love that they were only a dollar, a dollar general, and yet they have the look of something that would be more expensive. I've definitely seen this type of pattern at places like Target. Um, Target has a lot of like tree skirts and things that are in that kind of, um, I would say it's more rustic on the farmhouse end. Um, so it's a great way to get the look without the price point. Let's figure out the temperature settings that we need for our easy press. 
We're inside the heat guide on cricut.com forward slash heat guide. The link will be in the description box below. This is definitely a must if you're working with iron on vinyl or you're working with infusible ink and you want to make sure you're at the right temperature and the right timing. This is a great resource. So we're going to select easy press 2. The heat transfer material is going to be smart iron on and our base material is going to be um, burlap. We're going to select the easy press mat and click apply. It tells us to preheat our project for 5 seconds at 315 degrees, then we'll heat it for 30 seconds with firm pressure, flip and press for 15 seconds in a cool appeal. The reason for the firm pressure, and this is really dependent on the type of material you're using. Um, if you're using something like burlap, if it's a thicker burlap, you're definitely going to want to use more pressure. Um, this is a not highly textured um, type of burlap, so I don't think I'm going to have to use as much pressure for this one. And it tells us what supplies you'll need, how to prepare, how to apply, and how to care for it, all of that information. So what we'll do is we'll follow these instructions and let's get started. Let's set our Easy Press 2 to the right temperature. So it's set for 315 degrees right now. You can always double check that by clicking on the temperature and adjusting it up and down. We're going to set this for 30 seconds, so that one's ready to go as well. Let's let this heat up and we can start working on um, our project. When you're working with um, iron-on specifically, it sometimes helps if you use something like the heat tape, especially if it's a larger project. But if you're feeling pretty confident about it staying in the right location, then you don't have to worry about it if it's a smaller object. I think I'm going to put some heat tape on here just to be cautious. And this is a special tape that you can use that withstands heat and doesn't um, transfer any coloring or anything to your project. So especially if you're working with something like it, where it's curling, I think this is a great time to add a little bit of tape to it. So I'm just going to lay this one down flat and add some tape. You could really have a lot of fun when you're designing with this. You could add the name across the bottom here. You could add it across the top, wherever you like. I really think it's going to look cute here along the top, and so I'm going to put it there. Um, but there's so many options, and you could really play around with fonts and colors and just all sorts of styles. So I'm going with kind of a very classic uh, farmhouse style theme, so that's why I'm going with a very simple classic design here. Sounds like our Easy Press has already heated up. So that one is ready to go, awesome. I have that one taped, I'm going to turn that one over and work on the next one before I start applying heat to our project. So have your Easy Press mat underneath or your towel, you'll place your project centered on here and you can take a look at what your project will look like just to make sure that you have an idea of exactly where you're going to place it. We need to preheat our project for 5 seconds before we apply it, so I'm going to take um, my easy press and place it this direction because i'm using the six by seven and the decal is a six inch decal what i'm doing is i'm taking this and turning it lengthwise so i get the seven inches along here instead of the six inches because i need as much extra space on that as possible to take advantage of this so this is preheated you can tell where it's preheated because it will make an imprint of where it's preheated and now we'll take our design and center it on here where we'd like it. Okay, I'm going to press this down. Be careful because it is still warm. We are going to break out either your butcher paper um, or your parchment paper or a Cricut um, iron-on protective um, sheet here. I'm going to take my project and turn it this direction. And then we're going to press down. It's said with firm pressure, so um, you know, just keep in mind the texture of your material when you're, you're doing this. Um, I'm going to put pretty firm pressure on this, um, not as much as I would have to if it was a highly textured burlap. We need to flip and press this for 15 seconds. There is a secondary layer here, so let's make sure we protect that as well. And we're going to count this down for 15 seconds. So make sure that when you start it, you're only letting it go to the 15 second mark. You can always reset your counter if you'd like as well. Okay. The 
this is a cool peel so we need to leave this alone and let it cool down before we work on removing the top here so I'm going to take this and set this aside and let's work on the next one so same setup as before we're going to center this on our mat make sure that this is nice and flat and pressed you get the best result if you're working with a nice flat product here you can also lint roll if you see any lint or anything on there and we need to preheat this for five seconds so I'm going to take this and preheat it for the five seconds Now we'll take our decal and we'll place it along the top, centering it exactly where we would like it. And we're ready to heat it, so we're going to place our iron-on protective sheet over the top. Place this right over, and then we'll press on this with firm pressure for the uh, length of the time. Now we need to press this on the other side, so we're flipping this over, we're putting the sheet back over it, and we're going to press it again, and we're going to give it 15 seconds on the countdown. We'll take our sheet off, and we need to let this cool down, so we'll come back to this after they've both cooled down. It looks like they have cooled down enough, so let's start out with the first one. What we're going to do is just pull back from the corner. And if you're working on it and you notice that it's not adhered, you can always lay this back down. Give it another 15 seconds, which is just half of the time that it says um, for more heat. I would never go above half of the time for heat. Okay, that one's ready. And we're going to do the same with the next one. So we're just going to peel up from the corner. And now these are ready to hang up and put on the mantle and display. Aren't they super cute? It's very, very easy. I love projects like these. You can take something that's inexpensive, only a dollar, and get a really cute result. And it'll be customized to your house and your style. And they're very inexpensive. It doesn't take that much material to make these. So even though I went pretty oversized with the names, there's still a lot of extra material left over. So what do you guys think of the finished results? I think they fit in perfectly with our decor. And I have another project that's coming up shortly where I'm going to show you how you can take a Dollar General tree skirt that matches these ones and personalize that one too. So definitely stay tuned for that one. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys later.